Okay, guys, where do I start? I guess you guys would like an update. Okay, on that note, let me just have a couple sips of coffee. <laughs> Holy Lord. Nuked about five times, by the way. Okay, so, you guys all know the stuff that went down with my husband. So, okay, let's see. I guess you could say the good news is he's home. But not really. That's not really the good news. There isn't really any good news, to be honest with you. Other than the fact that, yay, he's home with us for a while. So, it turns out, yes, he was on life support for five days. He was literally being kept alive by a ventilator. His heart stopped. Um, I'm not sure if it was AFib or whatever they said, but they had to restart him with everything. So, he was in a coma. Not, so, not induced, like I thought they had said. He was sedated, uh, I guess for obvious reasons, when people go on, on um, the ventilator, they have to be sedated so they don't fight it, but there was none of that going on because he wasn't fighting anything. Um, so he was in a coma for five, six days, I believe. It took them two days to get him off the ventilator and life support. Um, they literally phoned me about the sixth or fifth day and asked me what my wishes were if um, we wanted him. Basically, what they said was, would you like us to try to resuscitate him? Well, that's a stupid question to ask somebody. I said, because first off, I thought, I didn't realize when they said he was having trouble breathing and, you know, hooked up to whatever, I just automatically assumed they were talking oxygen. Like, yeah, he's got oxygen on his face to help him breathe. Well, no, that was after the ventilator, okay? Sorry guys, this is my only vice right now, is smoking. I don't drink, I don't do anything. So yes, it's a bad one, I know. But, and I'll actually have another one in about two seconds. <laughs> so anyways, what was I saying? Oh yes, the, the, he was on oxygen. But what happened was, so I found out later, um, he was in the hospital and had complications from cirrhosis of the liver. He has cirrhosis of the liver as well as pancreatitis or something like that. There's gallbladder issues. The mass that we saw in his brain was actually brain damage and fluid. So there's brain damage caused by the toxins, um, the ammonia actually from his liver not working correctly. And it's not like his liver is bad. His liver's done. He's stage four. Um, cirrhosis, ascites, ascites or ascites, whatever, it's the liquid fluid, and the reason why they thought he had pneumonia was because he had so much fluid in his abdomen that his lungs were soaking in it. So, that was also making his breathing not great, the shallow breathing, and then, of course, his heart went into AFib because of the not being able to breathe, so he had a long period where there was a lack of oxygen to his brain. So he also has what they call HE, and I can never say it, but it's hema something, something apothecy. I don't know. It's called HE for short. You can check it out. It's to do with the ammonia buildup in your brain from your liver not circulating and, and changing your good blood or your blood into good blood, blood. So basically the toxins are just all over the place and he's not getting oxygenated blood blood to his brain so there is some memory loss there there's big time frustration of forgetting what simple words are like he'll ask me for something and he'll be like you know that thingamajig that whatever or you know that thing that was in that thing that we saw and I'm like and the thing is you, you try to answer the question or guess what he's saying and oh my god the anger like he's so mad and he's so frustrated and you know, he goes into fits of crying, and, I mean, that's only, like, psh, tiny... Hello, neighbor. That's only tiny parts of it. Um, so, yeah, stage four, it's basically like liver cancer. The only cure, actually, I wouldn't say that's a cure, but the only thing that they could do would be a liver transplant, and it has to be, like, not like where you can get a piece from somebody who is a match. You, he needs the whole entire liver. And the problem with that is he's got so much damage to his pancreas 
and other issues like his heart and whatnot that he's not a candidate for a liver transplant. I know you guys are asking me how can I be saying this straight faced. I'm I'm in a bubble right now. I've been sort of walking around for the last month like I'm in a video game or a dream or just like just something different other than real. It's very hard to explain. It's surreal. My brother, the weirdest part is the day they were wheeling Billy, like the ambulance was taking him out on the 21st of November. It's the strangest thing. My brother was put in the hospital a couple of weeks beforehand. Um, he has the same thing, but his stomach actually exploded. And I mean, quite literally, it was spraying all over his bedroom. Very gross, I know. But he was delusional as well. He thought that, you know, they've drained me, I'm good to go. Telling my sister to remember to grab his smaller track pants now because he's not as big as he was. And, you know, I can come home, blah, blah, blah. And every time we told him... He wasn't coming home. He just kind of laughed it off until my brother-in-law said, Are you ready, ready to meet Jesus? And he just kind of went, Huh. Like, this isn't funny anymore. But anyways, like I was trying to say, since I got sidetracked, um, the, the day they were wheeling Billy, Billy in the ambulance, my brother died within about five minutes of that whole episode. So they're wheeling my, brother in, my husband in, and my brother was dying at the same time from the same thing. Um, his was a little bit worse because all his organs shut down like boom, 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 boom. Whereas with Billy's issue, as I was trying to get back to you and tell you this, I'm sorry, give me one pause so I can gather my thoughts. Okay, if I remember. When the doctor phoned me and asked me if I wanted him to be resuscitated, I kind of lost my shit because I only then found out that he was on life support and basically balancing in between life or death. And it was my call. He was had very low white blood cells. Um, there was a bunch of stuff, but they said that he needed this life-saving, basically, uh, blood protein that if he didn't get, he was sure to die. So I'm like, yeah, like, absolutely. But then I said, like, because he asked me if Bill had any preferences about did he want to be on life support, la, 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 la. And I told him, I said, this is really strange because we had this conversation, honest to God, like a week before all this went down. And Bill had said, I don't ever want to be on life support if I'm, like, if my disease or whatever's wrong with me isn't going to get better, if I'm going to get worse, if I'm going to have brain damage, vegetable, whatever you name it, he didn't want any of that. So I said to the doctor, Bill said he doesn't want to be on life support if he's not going to be like himself again he doesn't want to have brain damage or this and that whatever and the doctor was sort of listening to me but not really listening to me he goes i just need to know are you going to give me permission to do this to save your husband's life and i'm like well yeah like and he goes anything else we need to do and i'm like well yeah like since you put it that way i'm not gonna fucking say yeah kill him you know what i mean like that's kind of a like considering they hadn't told me what was wrong with him yet i had no idea the only thing that i knew was i thought he had pancreatic issues because that's what we were dealing with that's all i was told by Bill and whatever. And, uh... Whoa. That was a hunter. Gunshot. Relax. That was a little too close. It's okay, Bubba. Get in there, big guy. So, uh... I think he wants to eat. That's my cat that I watch. Take care of. Sort of. It's okay, Bubba. Anyways, sorry. See, sidetrack. See, whatever. But anyways, I don't know how to make this a short story, but yes, so they had to give him this al albumin, I think is what it's called, and it's a blood protein that your liver would naturally be producing if your liver was working. Well, his liver, they described it to me, is basically a rock, whereas it should be a sponge ciphering and doing all the stuff it's supposed to be doing. It does nothing, basically. He had varsities, which is bleeding in the esophagus, uh, blood leakage kind of like everywhere and all over. He had an infection inside his abdomen. Um, that's why he was throwing up blood the week before he went in. Like, we didn't know that. I just thought it was, like he said, a nosebleed. Like, what do I know? It's his body. You figure he would be telling me what's going on, right? Yeah. Mm, okay, thanks, Billy, for that one. But anyways, apparently Bill's known he's had uh, cirrhosis of the liver for four years and hadn't bothered to tell us. Um, 
So yes, he had like the diarrhea and everything, and that's why I was asking you guys, you know, the diaper issue, whatever. So anyways, we'll try to make a story short. He got transferred from ICU to another hospital because he was apparently okay. So he went to Grimsby Hospital. Um, they tried to send him home two days after he got there. And I was like, it's been a week, guys. Like, there's no way you can tell me. Like, this guy wasn't walking, standing, nothing when he left. And uh, though the doctor said, okay, we'll keep him here this weekend and we'll see how he does with physio, blah, blah, blah. They call me Tuesday and they said, Billy's good to go. I'm like, what? Because, yeah, he's been asking to come home. And he said he did really good with therapy. He can walk down the hall. He goes to the bathroom by himself, takes care of himself, all that stuff. I was like, right on. Kind of thought it was a bit fast, but okay. Sounds good. I can handle that as long as he's he's mobile because we're not really ready here at home. But we can fix it up and whatever. So anyways, we get him, start getting him ready to come home. And right away, there's an issue with his catheter. They take the catheter out. He can't pee. He peed, like, that much. And they're like, no, 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 you gotta pee more. So they brought a machine in, checked his uh, bladder. Well, he was full. It wasn't coming out. So now he's got a thing where his bladder likes to hold on to the liquid so he can't pee, so he's got a catheter in. Came home with a catheter, which I'm in charge of changing and cleaning. I don't take it out of his body. A nurse comes in to do that, thank God. But, huh. That's only part of it. The other part is, he cannot walk. We finally, like, I mean, he was literally immobile. Trying to get him in the car and getting him home, they basically put him in a wheelchair, wheel him to your car, and they're like, he's yours. No freaking home care, no nothing. Anyways, I guess all that started getting set up. But he's at home. He's got a walker. He's got a commode in the living room. We finally got him a toilet seat. So he does walk, if you can call it that, from the living room to the bathroom. He has been home since the 8th. And he has yet to have a shower. He has literally gone exactly one month without having a shower. Other than, like, if you want to call a camping shower, you know, where you stand up and you sponge yourself down and clean all off. That's what he's been doing. And on top of that, let's put it this way. It's not him doing it. It's me doing it. Okay? He goes in and cleans himself up a little bit. But I have to go in and basically bathe him. I am putting on his diapers. I am changing his clothes. I am brushing his hair. I am literally doing everything that your mother would do for you as a child. I'm even having to finish his sentences. His writing is atrocious. He wants to write in his journal, which I'm letting him do, but he's having a very hard time. So anyways, trying to narrow this down so you guys know where we are at the moment. He's been home since the 8th. The nurse comes up every week, check on him, check his vitals, the whole bit. Well, as it stands right now, oh yeah, his GI doctor, that's a whole other story. I'll do a whole video on him again. You guys want to look up a doctor, look up Dr. Romatowski in St. Catharines, and I won't say any more, okay? The man's basically killing my husband. He's written off. My, my husband is terminal, just in case you guys aren't clear what's going on here. My husband is terminal, right? They didn't think he was going to make it till Christmas. And then on that note, the nurse came to see him yesterday. He's got so many things going on with him right now. We had to increase some medication because he's got edema again, which means he's swelling up. His arms, one arm is huge. His feet are big. His legs are starting to swell. His abdomen is gigantic. He's due for a draining, but he's not allowed to go until the fifth. What the nurse said to me, because there's so many complications going on in his body that, like, we can't even get him for blood because he can't get him there. We're trying to get life labs to come up and take blood, but that's not going to happen. Somehow I got to get him there. But anyways, what the nurse told me was, in the next couple days, if he's still like this, we really need to get him back in the hospital. Because he should be on a constant drip because his salt levels... Oh, on top of this, by the way, guys, he's got type 2 diabetes, and he's not allowed to have salt. So you could just imagine the diet that we're trying to... I mean, everybody's eating well now, put it that way. <laughs> but he's low on salt because he's not supposed to have salt. But he's low on sodium. Uh, his electrolytes are off, and they assume he needs to be on a constant drip and be monitored. 24 7 and that's not the care I can give him here I want to I'm trying he's very grumpy like a grumpy old man 
but I know it's the disease. So, anyways, I just wanted to fill you guys in on that's where we are. Touch wood, he's still home in two days for Christmas. That might be it. He might be back in the hospital. I don't know where it goes from there. All I know is he told me yesterday that if this is how his life is going, he said, please put a bullet in my head. And I'm not going to do that, ever. We're hoping, if and when the time, not if, I guess when the time comes, that he just goes to sleep and just doesn't wake up. Because I don't want to see him go through that again. My kids don't need to go through this again, even though we're reliving it every day. This is all for him. He's at home because this is where he wants to be. But he's also said he's a burden and he knows he should be somewhere else. So I don't really know. I'm a rock and a hard place. I'm trying to do the right thing here. As in with my head and not my heart. But anyways, I just wanted to give you guys that update in case you're wondering why I've not been on. And everybody's, I've got the odd message asking me how Bill is, what's happening, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, I wanted to fill you guys in. That's where we stand. I want you guys to all enjoy your Christmas. I'm, we're going to do the best we can. I got a nice big turkey dinner ready to go. We're not really doing presents this year, sort of. It's hard. I mean, you know, financial and everything. It's very hard. It's also very emotionally hard because, like, you know, anyways, I gotta go on that note, guys. Take care. Have an awesome Christmas. I love you all.